Thank you. The gentlelady yields back, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from New York for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Minter, a federal court has stated that, quote, under the WPATH standards of care and endocrine society guidelines before puberty, treatment is focused on support for the child and family. Some prepubertal children may socially transition. No medical interventions uh, are indicated or provided for the treatment of gender dysphoria in prepubertal children. Do you understand this to be a correct statement? Yes. You talk to the mic. Or into yeah. It's actually not. Is the button red? Sorry. Okay, there you go. My apologies. Um, Yes, sir, that is 100% correct. Uh, before puberty, there are no type of medical or medication interventions whatsoever. We're talking about transgender adolescents who've hit puberty and, and who would be eligible to be considered when it's medically appropriate. What does the federal court mean in saying that, quote, no medical interventions are indicated that provided for the treatment of gender dysphoria in puberty? Puber actually, you just answered that. What does the federal court mean in saying that some prepubertal children may socially transition. Yeah, the only type of medical support or support offered to uh, a transgender youth before puberty is to just let them be who they are. And I can't stress enough, this isn't about kids becoming someone they're not. This is about kids being who they are. So just allowing them to live with a, a name, uh, clothing, et cetera, that reflects uh, who, who they really are. And it's, it's remarkable, they found that when um, Research has found that when children are supported in that way, they are indistinguishable in terms of their mental health outcomes from non-transgender kids. They're just as healthy and uh, really thrive when they get the support, uh, that simple support that they need. Thank you. Mr. Minter, what have courts said about laws that, tra that res restrict transgender individuals' access to medically necessary care? that they severely burden parents' fundamental rights to make medical decisions for their own children, and that they're blatantly discriminatory, that they violate the guarantee of equal protection, because they do something that has just never been done before in this country, which is single out a particular group of people, transgender young people, in order to deny them medical care. Thank you, Mr. Minter. A federal court has stated that, quote, the risks of gender-affirming medical care are not categorically different than the type of risks that other types of pediatric health care pose. For many adolescents, the benefits of treatment greatly outweigh the risks. Do you agree with this statement? Absolutely. What are the benefits of receiving gender-affirming care? They're enormous. They, they produce positive mental health outcomes for these young people. They dramatically improve, improve their quality of life. They do better in school. They develop positive social relationships. We heard that with Ms. Reynolds' testimony. Their relationships with their family improves, and their gender dysphoria is alleviated, and any depression, anxiety, suicidality is dramatically reduced. Uh, there's a, st a study from 2022 that found a 73% reduction in suicidality among kids who had received this treatment. Ms. Reynolds. Thank you very much for being here today. Is there anything about you, your son, and other families like yours that you think the subcommittee and the American people should know? I would like to just add one thing, if I could, and that is that with the, with the sports debate, I just want to share my son's process with that. With that. So um, as I mentioned, he was the only girl on the boys' team for many, many years when he was a child. And when he transitioned, he completely dropped out of playing sports altogether. So that left a big hole in his life. He, that's nothing that he did anymore, and it was because he felt the pressure from all of this kind of political um, discussion around this and, um, and, and dropped out completely. And I think that story is probably way more common than, um, than the, the isolated cases. Thank you, Mr. Minter. What would you say about what we heard from Ms. Cole about her experience with uh, uh, gender, care, gender care and her, her unfortunate experience. I thank her for sharing that story and how, what I, how I would respond. I think the most important thing to understand, that story is the exception, not the rule. 
vast majority of young people who receive these treatments are getting them after careful assessment and because they really need them. This has actually been studied. We know that 98% of young people who receive these treatments continue to receive them into adulthood. I think what that reflects is the care behind these standards of care and the assessment process and the care with which gender specialty clinics in this country are providing this care. So she is part of the 2%? Apparently so. Thank you. My time has uh, expired. I yield back. Gentleman's out of time. Thank you. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California for five